Hey, Catherine. Hi. All right. Everybody's back. Wardrobe change. You're wearing black still. No, I got on different. I got a different t-shirt. The, <laughs> the other shirt, it was a collar shirt. Huge change. Huge change, Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't recognize you. I'm sorry. My bad. I felt funny about that, but they were, oh my God, yes, of course. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on. There we go. There we go. Gotta take them off too much glare. <laughs> oh, guys. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sexy oh. beast, no matter how you slice it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Carlton T. Clay here, VPN News, thevpntv.com, and I am privileged to be here with, this is just my childhood dream come true. I'm so excited. We have uh, Nakia Baris, Catherine Sutherland of Power Rangers, and we have Judith Hogue. Just I, too many things to name, but we're going to see the, the Ninja, Ninja Turtles movie, uh, Nashville, uh, Halloween Town movies, all that great stuff. We have these beautiful ladies here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. How are you all doing? Wonderful. Thank you. No problem. Right. No problem. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're here today to talk about um, your convention, Nakia. Um, so if you can tell us a little bit about that, that would be amazing. Yes, this is our third year in Atlanta at the Sheraton Atlanta Hotel, uh, June 10th through the 12th. We have a fantastic lineup. We have Power Rangers. We have uh, stars from the uh, Ninja Turtle movies, uh, Judith Hogue here as well, who's, uh, as you said, played a million characters. Uh, we have amazing voiceover um, actors, Monica Rial, Eric Stewart, and of course, my Power Ranger family. We have probably about 20 Power Rangers that are going to be there. We wanted to bring Rangers and pop culture all in one to Atlanta. And that's, so that's what we did. And the name of the convention is Ranger Stop and Pop Convention. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Now answer this question for me. Why did you choose Atlanta? Well, we felt like um, I co-own it with Karen Ashley and Michael Bioni. Michael Bioni started Ranger Stop Orlando about nine years ago. And um, Karen and I have been attending cons for the past 10 years, her a little bit longer. So we, we felt like we knew what guest would want. And Mikey has been running his con for nine years and also has been a vendor at many cons. So he gets to see uh, and, and know what vendors and exhibitors, what they want. So combining the two, we were like, we just need to figure this out. Um, we chose Atlanta because we know that Momocon is pure anime. Dragon Con has a plethora of, of guest stars, but not a huge Power Ranger following there at all. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Our Rangers often have a difficult time getting into Dragon Con, actually. So oh. we wanted to bring Power Rangers there, but we also didn't want it just to be a Power Ranger Con. We wanted to add in pop culture as well. And so that's where we brought in anime and also really popular movies from the 90s. Got you. Now, this is the third year of this particular convention. Now, Catherine, what, what are some things that you enjoy about being a part of it? Well, it's run by my best friend <laughs> and two of my very dear friends, Karen and Michael as well. Um, and as she said, they, they attend a lot of conventions. So I feel like they really bring, um, they really have a good sense of what people are looking for from a guest perspective and for the fans. Um, so they do games and they do a VIP party and dance parties and um, they have giveaways and there's just something going on all the time. It's very high energy and it's very interactive with the fans. So it's a very, it's very different from any other convention you'll attend. Got you. Now, Judith, this will be your first year um, being a part of Ranger Stop and Pop Convention. What are you expecting? I'm expecting it to be amazing. You know, I was... Nikki and I met in Atlanta last year for the first time and we were doing a convention there and she started telling me what they were up to and I've been watching we felt madly in love and then I fell in love with Kat and I met Karen first and had already fallen in love with her and I was 
really interested in just seeing women run a convention. This is unusual. We don't usually see this. It's usually a male dominated thing. And, um, and so I was hearing what they had planned. And then I was checking in all through the weekend and seeing what they were posting. And it just looked like a completely different thing than most of the conventions that I had been to because it was so interactive and because the fans were like getting a chance to not just meet from a person in front of a table, but like be next to communicate with play with, it was a different thing. And I thought, Oh, that is, you're onto something here. This is a whole new invention of a convention. And so when they asked me, I was honored and I said, yeah, of course. <laughs> and also to support them, I'd support them in anything. So awesome. when you love, you love hard. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, Nakia, can you tell us who's going to be there this year? Oh, wow. There's like, 30 guests. I'll, I'll, I'll name just, I'll name a few. Uh, from Ninja Turtle, from the Ninja Turtle movie, uh, Francois Chow, Judith Hogue, Brian Tucci, um, Ken Scott, anime side, we have Monica Rial, Eric Stewart, Veronica Taylor, uh, Lindsay Sidal, uh, Power Rangers, we have Catherine Sutherland, Jason David Frank, who's only going to be there on Saturday. Um, Steve Cardenas, we have the In Space um, cast, we have some uh, members from Beast Morphers, Rory Travis and Jazz, we have MMPR, I keep going like this because I'm like trying to catch <laughs> the cast. <laughs> There's like a hundred of us, so. Time Force. Time Force, we have three of the Time Force that are going to be there. Um, one that hasn't been announced will be announced today and he'll actually be the very last guest that we announced. So by the time this airs, I can say it. Um, so we'll have we'll have three, three um, Time Force uh, cast members and just a, a plethora of other guests and exhibitors and artists. And we're also, we also have something called the RSP Lounge. Um, it's really, it's, it's a, a way to get to know some of our guests and some of our vendors and some of our cosplayers a little bit more. And so it's set up in the pre-function area and um, Alexis Cardoza, who um, has who produces also Freddie Prince Jr. on um, a couple of um, platforms. And he also produces Cat and I with our, our podcast. He holds interviews with guests and vendors and so forth. And we call it the RSP Lounge. It's out in the pre-function space and um, it's live 24 hours. Well, not 24 hours. It's eight hours, however long we're there at the con. Mm -hmm. it's live throughout the con, uh, Friday through Sunday. So that'll be a fun too. Awesome. Now, um, I'm sure you ladies are aware of this, but you guys... Um, you ladies have definitely had a major impact over the years um, as far as just, you know, from people like me, my generation, and you're impacting the new generation now who are just getting into Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles and all of these um, larger than life characters. How has it been knowing that you guys are in a major, a major influence on people? Like, how do you guys feel about that? And that's a question, that's a question for all of you, all three of you. I feel like I I'm saying humbling. Go ahead. No, no, I said I feel like I've been speaking too much. So Judith. Oh, okay. I would say it's humbling. Um, you know, nobody decides to be an actor so that they can act alone. Mm. You, you do it so that you can act with other people and then hopefully send something out into the world that makes a dent somewhere. And I have friends who are tremendously talented and they've done great work, but they've never done anything that's really connected with, uh, uh, with the culture where you become a part of the story of culture in a sort of specific period of time. And to have that is such an honor. And I take it and I can see that I watch Kat and Nakia at conventions, you know, when we get to see each other, I'm, we're always running to each other's tables and saying hello and trying to check in. And I see the impact that they have and also the respect that they have for their fans because it's not a little thing. It's, it's a gift and it's an honor. And I think that when you get that in a real deep heart way, you um, appreciate and um, amplify it 
and share it and then turn, I always say I turn the mirror back on the fans. Mm. They're telling me stories about how I've impacted them, but it's really their experience of me and it's all about them. So I just kind of turn that mirror back and just listen deeply because you hear the most moving and amazing stories from people who come to say hello. Awesome. Catherine? Yeah, it, it, it is. It's very humbling. It's a huge blessing. Um, it never gets old. I mean, that we hear so many stories about how our show got them through a difficult time in their life or they were bullied and we were their friends or they saw someone that they connected to on the screen. Um, and it, it's just a, a real gift to be able to be a part of that. And also being a superhero is like a huge responsibility. So I <laughs> take that very seriously um and being a fem strong female but also feminine i'm really gr like honored to be um that in in a lot of these little girls lives too that they knew they could still be feminine but also be strong they didn't need a man to save them you know um so i i think that's a really great message of our show too so it is a gift and i i cherish it and i love it and um i'm so glad that we're back to conventions again so that we can oh. do it again <laughs> awesome awesome Nakia I think they've said it all I mean I just I'd just be saying ditto um, <laughs> uh, I, I in addition to that I appreciate um seeing little brown children boys and girls come to my table and tell me how much I influenced them and how much I encouraged them to seek their dreams because they saw someone like me on television mm -hmm. and I didn't even think about that when I was on the show but you know in retrospect just just realizing what an impact it was to so many people it's very humbling and it's a true blessing and we wouldn't be able to do any of this without our fans so i mm -hmm. am so grateful to have them because the me even owning a con wouldn't even be possible because we have you know so i'm i'm just blessed all around so yeah yeah i want to like i said i want to piggyback on what you just said in the kids part as having an impact on like I said, little kids, because like I said, again, I grew up watching Power Rangers, um, you know, grew up watching Ninja Turtles, but just specifically with Power Rangers, again, Walter, being the Black Ranger, like seeing someone like him on TV, you didn't see like Black superheroes on television when I was younger. So seeing someone like him, seeing Karen, seeing you, like that was, that's important, you know, so that I think that's major, and it's important that even now, as things are getting more diverse, it's important that people are starting to see reflections of themselves on the small screen and the big screen. So I think that's awesome. That's definitely awesome. Now, um, Judith, we have to come to you. We have to talk about um, some Disney Channel stuff, which is, okay. yes, we have, to talk, <laughs> we have to talk about Halloween Town. Now you were in all four movies. You were Marnie's mom. Yes. Like, how was it working on those films? Like, how was, how was that experience? It was so much fun. And you know, the kids were so little at the time and they were kids, like they always say like, don't do movies with children and animals mm. because you know, they completely steal focus because they're so present. And for me, I always learn so much from them because they are so connected to what they're doing and they have no, they're just being. Mm -hmm. And so, with the kids it was so much fun because we did them over a period of time so I got to watch them grow up and um it was fun because I would have to go back and forth and walk this line between we're all professionals acting so you have to like pay attention and focus because here we go and being their mom and loving them and helping them to have fun because it's long hours and they're little kids and um, it was just, we made it as playful and fun. And I think that translated into the films and um, may have a little something to do with why they, they translated so well. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to ask you this because we are in the age of rebooting every single thing. Um, yes. <laughs> Not a new idea. New <laughs> <laughs> Would you be interested if, I, could, I don't know if they've been talking about doing more Halloween towns or whatever. I'm sure there's, there's been conversation. Would you be interested in rebooting Halloween town if they did like another movie? 
Absolutely. I think there's room for it. I think all the roles shift. I think um, I move into the Debbie role. Kim moves into my role. A new Marnie-like character comes along. There's still more story to tell. And of course, it always just comes down to the script. I keep threatening to write it. I have a lot of ideas. I talk to people. Fans are always giving me ideas because they really want it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, who knows? I'm I'm game. I know that most of the cast is game. So I don't know. This and more Power Ranger movies. I don't know. <laughs> this is a thought. Speaking and then speaking about Power Ranger movies. I don't know. This, what this... about that uh, the Zeo movie? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, let's talk about that. And I have another question to follow that up. Yes, I saw the key on your page um, that there was supposed to be a Zeo movie. So what happened? Well, Kat can explain that. But, you know, as she was at when she goes into explaining it, something that I just learned that was not in my contract was the Zeo movie. Mm. So I didn't learn about the Zeo movie until we had the triplets on our show cat, um, Power Rangers Playback. So part of the Zeo cast, we had the Gold Ranger, which were actually triplets. Um, people thought it was one person that they just duplicated, but it was actual triplets. And when we were interviewing them, they told us that Saban had written in their contract a Zeo movie and we were supposed to do a Zeo movie, but then they ended up getting cold feet about this role and deciding that they were going to do something else and they completely regret what they've done, but mm. um, they ended up leaving the show. And then the Zeo movie kind of fell to pieces, but I knew nothing about a Zeo movie. But Kat, please share yeah. what you no, know. When I was cast, I had two movies and the show was in my contract and it was going to be a Zeo movie, but then they, shipped, they, they changed it all up and, and we started doing the Turbo movie. Um, so we knew we were going to be doing a movie when we were filming Zio, mm -hmm. but we didn't know we didn't know it was going to be a totally different suit and everything. That was kind of a surprise. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there was a lot of things in the Turbo movie that were not explained because they cut a lot of things out of of it, obviously, because it was like a three or three and a half hour movie or something like that. <laughs> but there was, you know, everyone always <laughs> asked me the question like. Wait a second! You what? You're supposed to be stronger than before, but you morphed into the water and you didn't morph, and you, it stopped your morphing. And I'm right. like, well, I explained that in the original script, where Tanya and and Adam go into the water through the the tubes in the power chamber, and they, there's a mermaid that's leading them on a quest, and then something happens with the crystals under the water, and they come out, and they're like, they had like shredded suits, like it had like destroyed almost killed them or something like that mm. and um they cut that whole thing out it was I, I just there was so many things there's a scene on the box where i had the flamethrower and that was supposed to be this giant alligators coming out of the water to eat us and and i kill it with the fl flamethrower they cut all that out it's going to cost too much money mm -hmm. so <laughs> So he'd rather put that in his pocket than than do that for the the kids watching. Can this. I say something about this? Because they did stuff like that in Ninja Turtles, and and it's one of the things that always, as a parent, drove me crazy about kids movies. Because who takes the kids to the movies? It's the parents, yeah. and you have to watch these movies. And I think if filmmakers like kids are smart, they get that there's something missing here. Mm -hmm. This doesn't quite add up. So if any of us write movies going forward. Let's agree not to do that. Let's yeah. answer the questions and follow through because the kids deserve it. They're yeah. really, really smart. They are. Yeah. Well, you thank know, you. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Because I'm going to say, as the viewer, can I say something real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A lot of that that was cut out was also because they fired the original director six weeks in. So most of the things that, that he had filmed, which were really, really good, intimate things you get to learn about our character, they cut out of the movie. Mm. And so it became like- Choppy. Just, Bobby, Jumpy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, wow. I'm learning a lot of things today. So <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you for- Power Rangers deep right. inside. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for explaining that for sure. Now. I, now, actually, I had an idea um, 
How would you, how would you, because I feel like the Power Rangers would have had kids by now. Well, some of them. I feel like the next series or next whatever um, should be their kids. And you guys should be like the mentors, so to say, like, you know, so to speak. I think, you know, just, just want to throw that out there, you know. They, they missed an opportunity in the, the recent Power Ranger movie because yeah. the guy that played Jason's dad kind of resembled Austin. They could have used Austin as his father or they could have, you know, put in like a teacher or someone like you see Kimberly as a waitress in a restaurant or you see Tommy as a teacher or you see, you know, they missed an opportunity there. That would have been fun, some fun little Easter eggs for the fans, but... Nope, they just did that tiny, quick flash of Tommy and Kimberly. That was all, all we got. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I, well, I hear they're supposed to be, a, they're, they're redoing it again. So we'll see. We'll see if it's stronger than before. <laughs> <laughs> no, new, no new ideas in the universe. <laughs> no, no. No, no, I have, to, I have to jump real quick. I have to come back to you, Judith. We have to talk about Nashville. We have to. We have to talk about uh, Nashville. I love you. How was that experience on that show? Because I love that show. I was a big fan of it. I love the music. I love the drama. How was it working on that on that show? It was a lot of fun. It was very chaotic. Um, we had uh, really, uh, I think it was the best season. I think the first season was the best season, but it was rocky as could be because it, there was a showrunner change and the scripts were never done on time. And so mm. it was a real pressure cooker. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. One of the things that, and I'm actually coming to you from Nashville, I fell in love with the, the state and the city and said, I'm moving. And so uh, three years ago, I bought a house here. And then two years ago, I moved here permanently. And hopefully I'm going to have a new neighbor soon. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll just drag Nakia. Um, <laughs> And uh, so it was really cool because they gave us the keys to the city and we got to go everywhere. We had access to everything. I got a, a quick, um, uh, real in-depth um, country music um, experience because that was not the world that I was from and I grew to love it and appreciate it. And it's just, you know, one thing I will say is I just um, love, you know, country music, country folk, um, the, the grassroots of music uh, that created country music, that's been a whole journey. I wish we actually had, had explored that more in our show because there's a you know quite a legacy to country music and where it originated from. And, um, and it, it was so much fun. It was, it was an honor. I just wish they'd let me sing. They didn't and it broke my little heart. Mm. I've never wa I never watched it. I'm gonna watch it now that I'm. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's an amazing show. Yeah, definitely an amazing show, especially, especially the earlier, the earlier seasons. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. After a while, they kind of turned it way more into a soap opera, and I and they kind of missed Nashville was a character in the show, and then they kind of took it out. I think there was a belief by the network that the attention span of the human is very short, so you got to just go, go, go. And people really didn't want that. They mm. wanted a longer um, experience of a scene uh, that didn't just cut, 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 cut. So, what, but it, it was great. Hulu? Is it on Hulu or Netflix or anything like that? Um, I'm not sure. Probably, probably. It's, it's probably Hulu. I think it's maybe on Netflix. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So many, so many streaming services out there. It's on one of them. I'm sure. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so ladies, um, we can do one at a time. What are you guys working on now? So we'll start with uh, Catherine. What, what do you have going on? I am a stripper. <laughs> and she's good. I have seen that act, and it is fabulous. I'm constantly oh, thrown twenties. I, I learned everything I know from Nakia. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no i i have um we have a youtube channel called power rangers playback that we started at, um right at the beginning of 2020 before the pandemic and 
it um, was such an amazing outlet for us um, creatively through the pandemic, but also a beautiful way to connect our fans and have a community through that that difficult time. And it's just grown very quickly. We have membership now and um, and uh, it's just so much fun working with you here. And then we have a podcast also. Um, I have been writing my mother's book a novel for eight years now mm. so one day i will finish that <laughs> um and i have uh, i've written several children's books which i need to um have a couple of them illustrated um and i have one on my website available called the boy with the heart on his sleeve um and i'm moving to tennessee to be yes <laughs> yes <laughs> that's taking up a lot of my time right now so well, yes. Catherine, what's your website? Um, it's katherinesutherland.biz. And then um, we have powerrangersplayback.com as well. And then um, Power Rangers Playback on YouTube. You can find me on social media. We're always announcing stuff. Awesome. Going awesome. On. We have a lot going on. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, Miss Nakia, what you got What you got going on? Uh, so it's it's so funny. Most people, I, I listen to, to the introduction. You're like um, Power I did Power Rangers 27 years ago, and it does not matter what I do today. It always goes back to Power Rangers. It doesn't even matter. It's it's, but it's a it's a gift that just keeps on giving. So I'm very very appreciative with that. But since Power Rangers, I've done a plethora of other things. I've done voiceover. I was a series regular on a show called A Barbie's Life in the Dream House. Currently, mm -hmm. I'm working on Danger Force. I actually play the mother <laughs> to two superhero twins. <laughs> Full circle. It's on Nickelodeon. Uh, we just wrapped up the season, season two, waiting to see if season three is going to be picked up. And I am now working on producing. I know I had spoken to Judith and Kat knows as well, but I actually have a meeting today um, I'm pretty excited about. But I would love to be able to produce my own things, my own shows, my own series, and be able to bless other people with work. That is my goal for 2022, in addition to doing Power Rangers Playback and Ranger Stop and Pop and just all the other 50 jobs that I have. Um, but yes, that's what I'm currently doing right now. I'm working on uh, getting my uh, production company, Sovereignty Entertainment, up and running. Awesome. Awesome. Well, first of all, many blessings to you and your meeting today. I know it's going to be great. Thank so you. awesome sauce. All right, Judith, what do you have going on? Wow, Nakia makes me exhausted just hearing. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, that was, you know, part of the um, impetus to move to Nashville was uh, we brought our production company here, which is ACE, which is Associated Cinema Enterprises. We um, ran straight into a pandemic, um, as well as um, some challenges within our family that uh, kept my husband in Los Angeles for a while. So what I've done since I've been here is I've done a, three movies. Uh, one came out this year called Finding You, which was Roadside Attractions. And then um, I have another movie called Roll With It Baby. And that is coming out, I believe, this fall. Um, and then what I've really been uh, doing is really like there's something that happens. It's much like Nakia said, you know, I will always be known for Ninja Turtles. I will always be known for um, uh, Halloween Town and as well as a few other things. But I've found that in the last couple of years, connecting with fans and doing this has been so much fun. And so I have a YouTube channel um, called Judith Hope Goddess on Fire and I connect. Um, I'm really interested in personal development. So I do a lot of stuff there with people, which is really mind over matter and ways that you can take your life and uh, be more empowered in it, especially for actors and artists. I have something called Actors Mind Mastery, um, uh, which I'll be putting out on my website, judithhogue.com, where I help actors master their minds so they can master their careers. Um, I have so many interests and in pokers in the fire. Uh, so it's really for me is staying focused and bringing them to fruition. So there's a lot going on. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, one last question for each of you. Um, if you could give one piece of advice, because uh, you ladies have been in the industry for a while, if you could give one piece of advice to an upcoming actor or actress, what would that be? I'm going to start with Judas for already here. I would say that the one thing that you absolutely must have is a pathologically positive point of view. 
believing that what it is that you want is possible. You don't have to know how it's going to be possible. You don't know how to know how you're going to get there. You just have to know that it actually is possible. And if you can just hold that as a seed in your heart and let that germinate and just keep revisiting it. Why are you doing this? What do you want? I had somebody come up to me recently and I'll try to be brief, but, um, and they said they wanted to be famous. And I was like, well, that's not going to get you anywhere that, you know, you're not, when it gets really rough, just wanting to be famous, isn't going to get you to get up and go to work and do that thing. That's really hard. This industry is about a lot of heavy lifting emotionally. Um, the amount of time you spend acting is infinitesimal to the amount of time you will spend managing your mind around your acting career. Mm. So it's really important to have a really positive supported, um, belief system in place that you can rely on um, because like Sugar Ray Leonard said, a champion is someone who believes in themselves when no one else will. So you are going to have to believe in yourself when nobody else does, like your family and your friends or agents or the world that just keeps chugging along so that you can find success and joy in your art form. Awesome. All right, Catherine. That's good stuff. Yeah, I think I might need to do your courses. <laughs> um, I, you know, now I'm, I'm 47 now. So I, I often think like, oh gosh, I, I probably would have had a much healthier, happier career in acting if I was in the space in my mind that I am now. Because back in, I look back at my 20s and I was just so full of doubt and insecurity and I was so impressionable. Um, and I, so I would say to young actors, like, don't compromise yourself because someone tells you, you have to be this, or you have to be that, or you have to cut your hair, or you're not this enough. You're not that enough. You need to look this way. I just think I was so easily influenced. Um, and I had, a ma I had managers that would tell me, don't speak in your accent. And I think I'm blonde, blue eyed girl in California. Like there's a million of me what may, would have made me stand out would have been to use my accent and then show that I can do an American accent. But I was told no, because they'll, they'll only hear your accent. You're not going to work more, you know, work with that or whatever. So um, yeah, just be authentic, be, find what makes you shine and don't compromise yourself. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Miss Nakia. Gosh, uh, <laughs> going last. I mean, they've literally said everything. Um, I, I remember Kat telling me that story about her manager telling her not to use her accent. And I, I think going in as your authentic self is, is the way that you steal the show because you're not trying to be anybody else. But I think more than anything, everyone can tell you no. You only need God to say yes. And I always mm. say that. Mm. So I, I remember auditioning for UCLA and um, that, that was the first year they opened up to incoming freshmen. And um, they were only accepting 50 students. And they told uh, one of my friends were, was already there. She was an upperclassman. And she said, you need to just declare another major. It's gonna be too difficult for you to get in. And I was like, you don't know who my God is, number one. And if God says yes, I don't care who says no. And he said, yes. I was the only African-American female. There were two black kids and we were the only ones accepted into um, to the theater department that year in 1992. That just says how old I am. Kat and I are the same age. I'm three days older than her. I'm 47, y'all. <laughs> oh, I have you so beat. <laughs> I could have babysat oh, wow. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, I, I just feel like it, a million, a million no's mean nothing if God says yes. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm, I want to thank you ladies again so much for saying yes to this interview. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I want to publicly say thank you to Nakia. Um, I never got to face to face say thank you for being the cover of on BPM Mag. So thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you uh, as we, me and Catherine talked offline, looked amazing. And we just appreciate you for, for, for being a part of it. So thank you so much. Your flowers, your virtual flowers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us truly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. So again, let's wrap it around. We have the Ranger Stop and let me get it right. 
Ranger Stop and Pop Convention, June 10th through the 12th in Atlanta at the Sheraton. Sheraton Atlanta Hotel. Yes. 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 Friday through Sunday. And then you can get more information at rangerstopatlanta.com. Correct. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank y'all so much. And I appreciate you guys and everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. You always can check out all our content at wpntv.com. And we'll see y'all next time. Be blessed. Peace.